everything is up. Inventory's up, rates are up, and prices are up. In this video, we're gonna go over the single family and condo markets in the state of Massachusetts. We're also gonna do an interest rate update, talk about how interest rates are not going to go down in the first quarter, heck, let's just say first half of 2024. Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent that sold more than 8,000 houses. If you have any questions about the real estate market, then know I am here to help you. Let's get into it all and jump into the single family market stats. Huge smiles for buyers this week because it was another week of inventory gains, which means another week of inventory high points. There are currently 4,654 single family homes on the market in the state of Massachusetts. Now this is a 66 unit jump in available single family homes from last week with our inventory levels being 8.2% higher than they were just 28 days ago. So far 2023 is sticking with the trend of inventory going up in the fall till about the end of October and then starting to retreat. If we're going to see a structural change to our market where I would begin to start talking about possible home price corrections, then the initial data points that could possibly open the door to that are coming at us. But in the same token, if inventory levels start retreating in November and the inventory trends stay consistent, then it's setting 2024 up for a year where we will most likely see sustainable housing price increases in the range of zero to 3%. Last year, I had said, I felt that the fall market was gonna be the buying opportunity of the year. I think history is repeating itself right now. If you're looking for a buyer opportunity, then it is now. You have some sellers that need to sell with a market that has less demand in it. This is the market to price test in. Look at that inventory gap. We now have 865 fewer houses on the market today than we did today last year. That inventory gap between this year and 2022 actually expanded as it was 847 units last year. But look at this year and 2021 inventory levels. I was thinking next week will be the week where we cross 2021 levels as there are now only 39 fewer houses on the market when compared today to the same time period back in 2021. There were 1,016 single family homes that came on the market this week. Now, jumping over that 1,000 mark was a bit of a surprise for me. But when I went back and actually looked at the historical data, it did the same thing last year. The small dip each year must have been due to the Columbus Day weekend. We listed 7.4% fewer homes this week when compared to 1,097 units that were listed this week last year. The four-week rolling average is 975 units, so we jumped a little above the four-week average, but we should really expect that the amount of new listings coming on the market should become fewer from this point forward as we close out 2023. We had 883 homes go under agreement, which was 13% less than the same week last year when 1,014 single family homes went under agreement. Now, I mentioned last week how you can visually see the consistent nature of how our home sales are down compared to the same weeks in 2022. We saw the 13% less this week. It was 11% less, less last week, then 16, then 17, then 15% in the weeks before that. Looks like that our fall sales levels are going to fall about 14 to 15% behind the fall sales levels of last year. Now the four week rolling average is 883 units. And did you catch that? The four week average is 883 units. And that is how many units went under agreement this week? I thought that was cool at least. So when compared to last year's market, new listings were off by 7.4% while under agreements were off by 13%. This is an improvement from the 8.5% difference from last week, but that is still 5.6% difference. And for the record, I'm not saying that the market was balanced last year or anything like that. I'm just looking at today's data to find trends of historical data in order to come up with an idea as to where we're headed in the future. There were 602 single family homes that closed last week for an average sales price of $764,000 and a median sales price of $631,000. Sales levels compared to the same week last year were down by 26% as there were 814 single family homes that sold. Months of inventory, this is how we determine what type of market that we're in. Zero to five months is considered a seller's market. Five to seven months is considered an equal market. Seven months or more is, compared, is considered a buyer's market. But the more aggressive of a seller's market that it is, it's closer to zero that you get. So this week, months of inventory increased to 1.53 months from last week's 1.48 months. The 1.53 months this week is compared to the 1.89 months this week last year. For the home prices are going to drop like a rock crowd. You need a lot more months of inventory than 1.53 months. Think six or seven months of inventory levels before you're going to see home prices go down in those levels happen. 
Real quick, here's my shameless plug. I just wanted to mention that if you're thinking about buying or selling a home, then it would be a true pleasure to help. Now, on to the condo market. We have 2,574 condos on the market as of Monday. Now, inventory is up by a whole 48 units this week. That makes inventory up by 5.7% in the last 28 days. Now, the inventory gap tightened again this week after an unexpected 10-unit increase last week. We currently have 258 fewer condos on the market than we did at the same time last year and 416 fewer units at the same time in 2021. And just as a quick side note, yes, it tightened, but by only five units with last year's comparison and only 15 units when compared to 2021. So it tightened, but barely. The markets are moving in relative parallel to one another. There are 483 condos that came on the market with a four-week rolling average of 481 condos. Boy, two units off the four-week rolling average number there. But again, look at that chart. We have pretty much been toe-to-toe -to -toe with the amount of new listings since uh, about the middle of August. And this week, we actually listed more condos than the same week last year. Again, there were only five more units or 1% more new listings, but it's still more than last year. So to recap, the last couple of weeks, we have been 0.8% and 2.2% short of the prior year levels, then listed 5.7% more condos and now another 1% more condos, toe for toe compared to last year. Under agreements were close, but fell slightly off last year's pace. This week, we put 378 condos under agreement, which is 5.3% below last year's numbers when 399 condos went under agreement. But check this one out. Three weeks ago, 377 units went under agreement, 374 last week, and 378 this week. That's a pretty tight range right there. Now, the four-week rolling average is 395 units, so we were a little below those numbers. So 1% more listings that came on the market when compared to this week last year, while selling 5% fewer condos, and there were 264 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $560,000 and a median sales price of $515,000. This same week, last year, there were 284 condos sold, so sales levels were off by about 7%. Months of inventory actually jumped to 2.07 months from last week's 1.97 months. Any chance you can just do me a huge favor? Can you hit that like button right down there? Believe it or not, it makes a huge difference for me in the channels. It plays with that YouTube algorithm. And while subscribing, that one doesn't hurt either. So please consider subscribing. Let's talk about the bane of my existence, otherwise known as interest rates. Up and down, up and down, then bam, up a lot. Interest rates are at or above the 8% range. This yearly graph really puts it all in perspective, no? If I have heard it once, then I've heard it a million times. I'm going to buy when the interest rates come down. I have two questions on that philosophy and would love to hear your answers in the comment section below. The first question is what percent do interest rates have to go down in order for you to move off the silent? So what percent does that need to be? The second question is what happens if a great deal of people who have the same idea and mentality enter the market as interest rates go down? What happens with prices then? In other words, what happens if the demand side of the curve spikes? And I've heard it over and over again about how the Fed will start cutting interest rates in the first quarter of 2024. If that is what you're waiting for, then please don't hold your breath. It's not going to happen. Oh, you want the receipts? Fair enough. All right, inflation isn't going down. If anything, the Fed is going to have to continue to tighten because inflation is hard to stamp out in an economy this size. And I beg of you to go back to the 1970s and see what happened there. To save you some time, I actually did this video right up here that talks about inflation rates, interest rates, and home price appreciation. But back to today's receipts on why inflation isn't done and neither are rates going higher because inflation levels just hit 3.7%. And then U.S. retail sales soared in September. We weren't supposed to see this happen with the resumption of student loans payments. The article goes on to say that this is certainly not the slowdown the Fed would have hoped to see, but they did mention that there was some worrying data in there. Building materials, appliances, and furniture all saw declines. And then there's this one. Bank of America reports best ever quarter three earnings. This isn't supposed to happen. Profits are supposed to go down when tightening and slowing down in the economy starts. But like the September sales article said, there are some headwinds, and they pointed out a couple, but check this out. The decline in fall of luxury goods. Now, the consumer is definitely in pain. It's just not showing in the numbers yet. But if the rich are starting to pull back, then expect a trickle down through the economy. The slowdown's coming. 
it just won't be here in time for any monetary loosening in quarter one of 2024. Oh, and I really like how they ended the article. They said, it's time we prepare. And this includes the very rich. The closet full of Louis Vuitton bling doesn't put food on the table or pay the mortgage. It sure was good while it lasted. I want to talk about your own personal real estate needs, whether you are looking to buy. In the next 9 or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and just find out more about your real estate goals. And if you're thinking about possibly selling, then we can help you traditionally or we could even, even offer you a cash offer on your house for a seamless and stress-free sales process. No matter what your situation, we can help you get it done. Now, you can visit us at youtuberealestateagent.com and fill in your information, and then we'll reach out to you. Now, questions or comments about any of this market data, then drop me a comment in the section below. You take the time to watch the video, so I'm going to take the time to respond to you. Until next time.